Hi, it's an honor to be here with all of you. Um, the purpose of my research was to look at the theories of international politics that apply to the war in Afghanistan, and in doing so to answer questions about why the United States invaded Afghanistan and why we remained there for 20 years, and why the war in Afghanistan is now branded as a failed effort. The invasion of Afghanistan under the name Operation Enduring Freedom was conducted under the premise of retaliation uh, to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. When the military effort began on authority of authorization for use of military force, the resolution passed one week after 9-11 and the vote had almost unanimous support. The strategic purpose of the war was to dismantle Al-Qaeda and to deny them a safe base of operations in Afghanistan by removing the Taliban government from power. This was a classically realist reaction with the government presenting a moral obligation to defeat the terrorist group that had committed an appalling action against our country. Being historically prone to force as a method of resolving conflicts, we needed to show immediate dominance through military action. We, exer we exercised our influence in the short term with little intention of waging a 20-year war. The war in Afghanistan was driven by power relations between, let me get, let me get on here, my bad. There we go. Um, with power relations between um, rival countries, uh, Russia, China, us, um, and initial support and view of legitimacy, uh, uh, legitimacy of this war would wane as the conflict wore on. Um, you know, I'd kind of be remiss without providing some history leading up to 9-11. During the Soviet-Afghan War, insurgent groups known collectively as the Mujahideen, as well as smaller Maoist groups, fought a nine-year guerrilla war against the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan and the Soviet Army throughout the 1980s. The Mujahideen were backed primarily by the United States, Pakistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, China, and the United Kingdom. This conflict was a Cold War era proxy war during which the US directed the CIA to run a large covert soft power operation with the purpose of bleeding the Soviet Union. The CIA convinced dictator Hafizullah Amin to allow them to set up surveillance installations that would be used to monitor the Soviets and uh, their aim was to humiliate the Soviets by arming anybody who would fight against them. Sound familiar? Now the U.S. and NATO countries find themselves back in the Cold War with Russia and Ukraine and, a, and in a proxy war type situation, this time backing Ukraine's valiant effort to maintain their sovereignty. With fears rising that the General uh, Secretary Amin was planning to switch sides to the United States, the Soviet government decided to deploy the 40th Army across the border in December of 1979. When they arrived in Kabul, they staged a coup, killing Amin and installing Soviet loyalist Babrak Karmal from a rival faction. The Soviet invasion was based on the Brezhnev Doctrine, a Soviet foreign policy that proclaims that any threat to socialist rule in any state of the Soviet bloc is a threat to them all, and therefore justifies intervention of fellow socialist states. We can see today with the conflict in Ukraine that Russia's tactical plans to deploy forces and install a puppet government are from the old Soviet playbook, and that per the Brezhnev Doctrine, um, Putin sees Ukraine as a threat to socialism and to his dream of a resurgent Great Russia. On January 1980, Foreign ministers from 34 nations of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation adopted a resolution demanding the immediate, urgent, and unconditional withdrawal of Soviet troops from Afghanistan. The UN General Assembly passed a resolution protesting the Soviet intervention by a vote of 104 to 18, 
Um, 18 abstentions, 12 members of the 152 National Assembly absent or not participating. Only Soviet allies, Angola, East Germany, and Vietnam, along with India, supported it. Afghan insurgents began to receive massive amounts of support through aid, finance, and military training in neighboring Pakistan, with significant help from the United States and the United Kingdom. They were also heavily financed by China and the Arab monarchies in the Persian Gulf. CIA covert action worked through Pakistani intelligence services to reach um, the Afghan rebel groups. One notable veteran of the Afghan operation was Sheikh Abdel Rahman, who became famous for his role in the World Trade Center bombing. Osama bin Laden had left Saudi Arabia in 1979 to fight the Soviet army in Afghanistan. By 1984, he was running Maktab al khidimar or the MAC, uh, an organization that funneled money, arms, and fighters into the Afghan war. By 1988, he had split from the MAK, or MAC, and established a new group, Al-Qaeda, which included many MAK, or MAC, members. The rest, as they say, is history. The CIA was great at creating chaos, but not so great at ending it. When the 10 years Soviet war was over, a million people were dead and Afghan heroin exports had captured 60% of the US market. I believe that the reasons we stayed in Afghanistan were strategic. We wanted to prevent it from ever becoming a hotbed for group, uh, terrorist groups like Al Qaeda again. Hegemonic energy access was seen to rival military might as a source of national power and geopolitical. Global dominance over the Eurasian landmass and the effort to gain greater, greater access in the Central Asia area, which has large deposits of oil and natural gas. Despite their differences with the US, both Russia and China acquiesced to the US-led military presence in Afghanistan because it furthered their goals in the region as well. Carter Malkazian, uh, author of War Comes to Game, Sir, 30 Years of Conflict on the Afghan Frontier. He was uh, also a senior advisor to uh, General Joseph Dunn for a chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He pointed out that terrorism, domestic politics, human freedoms, and reluctance by the military to give up were the reasons that the three administrations stayed in Afghanistan. So constructivist theory kind of comes into play here as well because our national interests and identity were also at stake. I believe our fundamental attribution bias toward Afghanistan as an ardent adversary was also a factor. We would only have to look at the history of the Soviets in Afghanistan to know that installing a, a pliable, pliant regime Making efforts to educate women, institute land reform, and quell the opiate trade were not, were not successful for the Soviets and would therefore just be uh, just as challenging for us if we're being realistic about it. Our failure uh, can be attributed to realism as applied to the early part of the war and imperialism to explain the failed nation building efforts. The anti-terrorism efforts, however, were successful with Al-Qaeda being uh, greatly diminished. I also think that the domestic level of analysis is needed to look at the role of US politics in the decisions of the administrations that oversaw the war. The Afghanistan papers showed that the American public had been misled about what was actually achievable as well as the magnitude of dysfunction that there was in carrying out the war. In Sebastian Younger's uh, recent article in Vanity Fair, The End of Forever, he wrote, uh, many Americans, as you can see, many, many Americans are now fond of saying knowingly that the war was unwinnable because it's Afghanistan, graveyard of empires, a rugged land filled with proud people who are happy to fight to the death. But that kind of breezy dismissal just allows us to avoid the embarrassing conversation about what actually went wrong. America had overwhelming military superiority, the approval of more than 80% of Afghans pulled in 2004, and the sympathy of the entire international community after the attacks of 9-11. The scale of those attacks also gave us the kind of legal, moral, and strategic justification that were utterly lacking in Korea and Vietnam. If there could be a sure thing in warfare, this was kind of it. And we kind of blew it. The date of the withdrawal from Afghanistan marked 
the 20th uh, anniversary, I'm trying to find my mouse here, there I am. Sorry guys, I'll just keep reading. Even though the security experts were concerned about the situation in Afghanistan, the majority of the American public were in favor of withdrawing. Uh, the ending deadline was a hard one. Compi it's kind of complicated by the rapid and unexpected dissolution of the American installed government. Many were caught off guard, even our intelligence services. During a hearing on the Afghanistan failures in front of the House Armed Services Committee, the head of the Central Command, uh, General Kenneth McKenzie, said that the undoing of the U.S.-backed government in Afghanistan was set in motion once U.S. military presence fell below 2,500 troops. Uh, the signing of the Doha Agreement had a pernicious psychological effect on the government of Afghanistan and on its military as it set a date certain for when we were going to leave and when they could expect assistance to end. I'm just going to keep going here. Um, the article shown here draws on uh, the use of uh, the Euclid's history of the Peloponnesian War to provide a reflection of these tendencies in imperial power. These are things that we, we need to continue to watch out for. Whether the failure at nation building in Afghanistan was due to misguided idealism or not, and whether media commentators have been consistent in their coverage before and after the fall or not, the long acquiescence to the occupation and quick reactions at its demise reflect a shared inattentiveness that is discursively con constructed. And whether labeled realism, imperialism, or something else, the history displays specific tropes that are still deployed to rationalize power and failures of power. So now the Taliban are in charge again. There's a feeling of victory among Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. Six months after the withdrawal, tens of thousands of Afghans have fled or evacuated, including large numbers of educated elites. Um, they either fear for their economic future or their lack of freedom under a group that ascribes to a strict interpretation of Islam. The Taliban do have incentives, incentives to stop al-Qaeda from international terrorism, especially against the United States and Europe. Uh, the U.S. can threaten the Taliban economically and militarily, um, though in the past the Taliban has pretty much ignored those threats. So, in addition to using an over-the-horizon approach to target information and intelligence on suspected terrorist activity, uh, using airborne surveillance and captured um, communications and images, we will continue to use a diplomatic and monetary leverage. Um, what's not all clear is that if those tools were getting any results, where two decades of American military force have not. I'm hoping the U.S. can um, can learn certain valuable lessons from Afghanistan and the struggle that we're facing in Ukraine right now. And uh, I do believe that's it. Thank you. I think we should have been tougher about getting out when we needed to. You know, I, th I think that, you know, installing this friendly government might have been kind of a mistake. Um, maybe, you know, working with the Taliban to perhaps find someone in power there that we could you know, bring, bring, you know, it's, in my personal opinion, and in, and in studying this, <laughs> I think that working with who you have there instead of grabbing somebody and, you know, putting them in, and we've seen how successful that's been for Russia. You know, it hasn't, it hasn't, but I, I think we would have had a better chance. So do you think that they had, like, a more clear purpose in changing that purpose out of the I do, without the little, um, you know, shift change and, and, 
you know, shift of direction that we took going over to Iraq, it, you know, if we had kind of just stayed where we needed to be, I think it would have been a lot better. Anyone else? I'd say, how could it not? You know, um, I think the fact that we do look at that as a failure, you know, I mean, <laughs> Russia had a really miserable experience there too. You know, I think we could have taken a lot of lessons from what they went through. Um, and I do think that, you know, kicking the can down the road did not, did not help us. It did make us look, I think, maybe a little bit weaker and I don't know how that plays into how the international community um, is actually seeing us now. You know, they're, they're seeing a very strong reaction from us now in a very, um, a very cohesive coalition, um, which we did have to some degree in Afghanistan, of course, but um, it just went on too long. Thank you so much, you guys.